I'm gonna show you one of my favorite shop hacks that sort of made its way into my shop without me ever inviting it over. It's kind of a good thing because I didn't realize I wanted it until it was here. I always like the idea of using these containers for holding my driver bits. You know, if there's ever a spot where one's missing, I can go find the bit and put it back here so it's always a full set. Now my next strategy was to buy more bits than I needed and just make sure that I had plenty here. And I thought that was a pretty good solution until I bought a set of these. Impact Phillips PH2 DeWalt bits and they have a yellow ring around them. Focus, focus, because it's DeWalt. And then I bought a set of these T20 bits from Makita teal ring and I quickly realized that finding these bits and these bits was a lot easier than finding any of the others. If I needed a Phillips bit, I would kind of just glance over here and get the yellow one. I wouldn't have to look at the head of it. Now Phillips, that's one thing, but think about T20 and T25. I'd had a pre-existing problem of not being able to identify T20s and T25s, especially if they're a little bit worn. They're very similar. I'm gonna even look at the number here really quick to see if, ooh, so that's T20. And seriously, I thought this was a T25. They're both T20s. Doesn't one of those look bigger? Which one, if one of those was bigger, which would it be? This one over here looks bigger to me. And that's the one I thought was a T25. Two of the common screws I use are the two inch T20 screw and the two and a half inch T25 screw. It was really annoying to come over here. Oh no, that's way too loose. That doesn't even fit. Ah, so naturally I expanded the coloring system like so. I picked the four most common bit shapes that I use regularly. The Phillips PH2, the normal Phillips bit, the square SQ2, like a Craig screw bit, the Torx T20, and the Torx T25. These are by far the most common bits I use. So I expanded the coloring system to give them all each recognizable colors. The Phillips, naturally yellow, because I was already trained to think Phillips PH2 when I saw yellow. And the T20, teal, same reason. The square SQ2, blue, easy, because of Craig Jig. And the T25 got orange because it was just a nice different color than the rest. So over one lunch break, I took a paintbrush, a note card, and an impact driver with a pipe cleaner wrapped around it, and painted rings around a whole bunch of driver bits. And in just a minute, we'll take a look at how drastic of a difference it makes, how easy it is to not only find the bit we're looking for, but more importantly, I think, to find when the bit is not in the organizer. That way you don't keep looking through and trying to find the T25 when it's not even in there. Let's do a little art project. Verifying the numbers here. Some of these Milwaukee PH2s look a lot like PH1s. I've passed over these a couple times, thinking they're PH1s, but PH2s are two. The cool part about this is you can just stick a bit in there, do that. And it does keep the circle nice and neat. I vote that doesn't matter. If you don't want to put it in a drill, just do this. Spin in your hand. Now for the bits that I used, but not very frequently, I gave them colors that weren't as bright, like white for the small Phillips, the PH1 fine Phillips, fine with a PH. Straight slot, brown in square one, the small square, dark green. So those colors don't stand out and that's by design. The big win isn't here, it's those bright colors back there for the ones that I use very frequently. And then for the other ones, like a T15, yeah, I didn't color them at all. No sins in wasting colors. Now this is not reality. The system has allowed me to be a complete mess when it comes to organizing my driver bits, which makes me very happy because I don't like to think about organizing. I'd rather just put things wherever I feel like and let the system kind of take care of it for me. I do try and keep the taller ones in the back. Mix it up, odd shapes. The freedom of 
not having to keep these organized is just really awesome. I like it so much. Now this is pretty scattered. This is intentionally scattered. It's quite scattered. We have a set of these socket adapters. One there, one there, and one over here. A couple tapping bits. Really gonna make this complicated. I mean, you might as well at least group something together. A diamond drill bit, step bit. Will that fit in here? Yes, it will. Allen wrenches, screwdriver. Getting closer to reality. A broken countersink bit. Allen wrench there. So this now looks a little bit more like how I would typically have this thing set up. Actually, not with nearly as many of these colored bits because I just colored way more than I needed. And of course, it's gonna be easy to find them if there are 45 square bits in here. Now at this point, this thing is just littered with various things. So let's say you wanna find a yellow Phillips bit. Can you find one quickly? Yep, there's some. How about an orange T25? Yep, how about a blue square? There are a couple. How about the teal T20? Very easy to spot the bit you're looking for in this case. And the other main benefit I mentioned earlier is the ability to recognize when the bit isn't there so you don't keep on looking. In this case, let's say orange T25. Do you see any orange T25 bits there? Nope. So we move on to other places in the garage to spin around. Other places where I might keep bits, like this little recessed area here in the MF slab. There's one, easy to spot. It's not a T20, it's not a T15, not a T27, because it's orange. I don't even have to look at the end there. Uh, I keep clusters of bits, various places, kind of wherever I feel like it, where I have little working areas. So here, if I want to do the Craig screw, blue square SQ2, is it there? Nope. There's one. This allows me to continue to be a mess in a high functioning sort of way. And I love it.